Lord, I pray that you will bless us tonight with courage and honesty um, beyond the normal amount, Lord, that your grace would truly be with this message and your peace and your love would just cover everyone in this message. Amen. Well, <clears throat> today is April 20th, 2015. And the Lord has an important, important message. He's, I've been feeling a grief all day. Ezekiel and I both have been feeling a real heaviness in our hearts and a real grief. And we really didn't know what it was about until I came to do the message. And then we realized that's what it's about. So I'm just going to get straight to what the Lord began to say to us. He began, Many are so sure they are ready to stand before me, but they're not taking a good look inside themselves or in my mirror. This concerns me, Claire. It concerns me that they are so ready, and yet they still quarrel and bite at one another. They still gossip and tell lies about one another. They still accuse with impunity, thinking they are so right and the other is so wrong. Yet I tell you, they are not ready to stand before me. They are blinded by self-righteousness. They are on a crusade to set the world straight, but they are unfit for the bridal gown. I cannot put a clean white garment on those who are still jealous and destructive with their tongue. I cannot put that gown on anyone who does not love their brother as they love me. Oh, Jesus, in this moment, I don't live up to that standard. With you, I count your will. As with others, I will do the same. If you willfully put down your dislike, hatred, resentment, jealousy, or distaste for others, I will help you and fill in the rest. It's all in the will. If you willfully engage in jealousy, gossip, hatred, pride, and self-righteousness, you're in serious trouble. All I am asking of you, so you will fit into your pristine bridal gown, is an honest self-appraisal. If you're holding scorn and contempt for anyone, voluntarily, willfully, you will not stand before me on that day. And at this point, the Lord quickened the scripture to me. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. He continued, if I love you, and you are not committed to loving others, you are not worthy to escape what is to take place on the earth. Love will be the acid test, not doctrine, for that shall pass away, not prophecy, for that too is fleeting. You may be a prophet full of the word of the Lord, but if you have not love, you will not stand. Oh, Lord, that seems so hard. It really seems hard to me. Even though I know that lack of love is so destructive, it still seems hard. So at this point, I had to stop um, and go to my husband for discernment because it's not like the Lord to give a harsh word. It was really hard for me to continue. It seems so out of character for the other messages that the Lord has given me. So we took some time to discern this, and it was the Lord. So I came back. It wasn't easy, but I, I just came back and listened and wrote what he said. He continued, I did not say you must be perfect in thought, word, and deed, for none is perfect. But your intention to be perfect, to love perfectly, to be kind, merciful, 
and entertain absolutely no malice towards others. If you have made this resolution, you will stand. But if you are standing in self-righteousness, pointing the finger, quarreling, judging, standing in my place, giving out judgments, then you are doomed to remain in the tribulation. Why do you think I've given you all these meditations, Claire? To prepare us? That's exactly right. I want to leave no one behind, but some of you have hardened your hearts towards each other and have trampled the innocent and the blind. Many of you on the Internet have taken shots at one another. You've wounded, crippled, and left them to die, isolated, despised, and without the fruits of their labor. Unless you repent and are found to be a blameless one, you might as well start making plans to stay here. You will not be taken. Love is my standard. Patience, long-suffering, kindness, mercy, meekness, the Beatitudes. This is a description of my bride. If you are willfully countering the Beatitudes, you still don't have my heart. You still don't resemble me. My bride must resemble me. Some of you will say, this is too harsh. But I say to you that you have not repented of these sins. You are harboring hatred. Am I to marry a bride steeped in rancor, jealousy, and hatred? If you truly repent of these sins, you will be taken. And I began to hesitate again. It's just, it's just hard for me to hear him. Um, be so firm, I guess, it's the word. Claire, please, this is me. Don't let me down. Shall I wait until after the rapture for them to find out they were not worthy to stand before me? Why do you think I chastise you so severely when I see one of these attitudes in you? Do you realize the seriousness of this behavior? Shall I reward a soul with an incorruptible body and a place in heaven? A soul who hates his brother and sister, the very one I suffered and died for? I don't care what others have done to you. If you are my bride, I have given you the grace to forgive and make an act of the will to love that person for my sake. I have given this grace to every single one. If you don't exercise it, what am I to think? She's my wife, but she hates that soul I died for. Is that an equal yoke? You see, I can overlook your weaknesses, but I cannot overlook your willfulness. There are those among you who perhaps are very weak or lacking in mature understanding to do as I say. For them there is mercy. But for you who call yourselves my disciples and teachers and prophets, you must walk in my ways. Is it not written, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter? Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. And the Lord quickened another scripture to me right after that. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And he picked up and started speaking again after that. Come now, though your sins be red as scarlet, I shall make them white as snow. 
I'm standing here before you, waiting for you to repent, to turn from your evil ways and embrace what is right. I have not come before you to chastise and leave you bleeding. I have come to bind up your wounds and grant you greater and greater graces for the building up of my kingdom. Seek me in the still and quiet morning hours when I may move upon your hearts and expose those things not pleasing to me. I have compassion and pity for you. I will embrace and restore you and surely take you to myself on that soon approaching day. I love you, and those whom I love I reprove. Nothing would be sadder to me than to remove the blinders after the rapture. That is why I have brought this before you. Please, take me seriously. Go back, look more closely into those hidden and dark places in your hearts. Allow me to pour my healing balm over those infections that you may be presented to me whole and entire, lacking nothing. My brides, I love you tenderly. Do not pull away.